I hope that this year will be the last year we demanding for justice and the world make anything to hold Assad regime accountable and all people who commit crimes against Syrian civilians. Thank you. August 2023, a rally to commemorate the 10th anniversary of the chemical attack on eastern Huta in Syria. Lugna al Kanawati's campaigning for justice. On August 21st, 2013, more than 1,400 people died, according to rights groups, an attack that many say constitutes a war crime. <laughs> Il y a 26 dossiers qui concernent des crimes commis par le régime syrien à l'encontre de sa propre population. La difficulté, c'est que nous ne pouvons pas nous rendre sur ce territoire et que nous ne collaborons en rien avec le régime syrien. Je vais vous assister, nous allons aller dans le cabinet des juges d'instruction. Vous allez pouvoir parler ouvertement et sans inquiétude de l'ensemble de votre témoignage. I'm nervous. Il a fallu pour le régime syrien mettre en place tout un système pour pouvoir continuer à financer ces crimes. Even now, Lubna's haunted by her memories of the attack in 2013. On the night of August 21st, Eastern Huta was bombarded with sarin gas, a deadly nerve agent. The victims, many of them families, had been surprised in their sleep. This region was the stronghold of the Syrian opposition near Damascus. <laughs> More than half of the victims were women and children. The bombing has since been attributed to the Assad regime. It's one of the deadliest attacks to target the regions that rose up against his government in 2011. More than a dozen rockets loaded with sarin gas hit the Ain Terma and Zamalka districts to the east of Damascus. The area was completely besieged by Syrian forces. Lubna arrived in France as a refugee in 2021. At the time of the attack, she was living in Mesraba. Working as a graphic designer, she owned one of the few printers that was still operational in eastern Huta. She helped local families by printing their death certificates en masse. My most vivid memory is of a man who asked me to print a death notice for 22 members of his family. Basically, it was an A5 sheet with the names, which he wanted to stick into the Qurans that are available in mosques so that people would pray for them when they opened them and saw the paper. The challenge for me was to find a way to print 22 names on such a small sheet while making sure they were legible. After the massacre, I spent about a week printing death notices and photos of the people killed in the massacre. I hope that one day I'll be printing the indictments that provide justice for these people. Even if I'm no longer working as a graphic designer, 
That would make me happy. Two months after the attack, a UN report confirmed the use of chemical weapons on the night of August 21, 2013. For several European countries, this account provided the basis for the prosecutions for crimes against humanity. Its findings are at the heart of a case filed by the Syrian Center for the Media and other NGOs at the Paris Legal Tribunal in 2021. The charge against the Syrian government, crimes against humanity and war crimes. Lubna's activities in Huta have enabled her to obtain valuable information for the court, the objective being to piece together the sequence of events of the attack. Today, Lubna meets her lawyer just before the hearing. I'll be assisting you. We'll go to the judges' chambers. These are two female examining magistrates who know the case well. You can feel very safe with them, and you'll be able to speak openly about everything without having to worry about your testimony and everything you've been through. 16th floor. One of the victims is a French national, which makes the anti-terrorism prosecutor's office eligible to process this case. I'm nervous. <laughs> we were unable to attend Lubna's hearing. The investigation is ongoing and remains confidential. The French anti-terrorism prosecutor's office was created in 2019 and deals with war crimes and accusations of genocide in Syria. There are 43 cases, 26 of which concern crimes committed by the Syrian regime against its own population. The difficulty is that, firstly, we don't go to Syria. We cannot go there. And secondly, we do not collaborate in any way with the Syrian regime, so we have to find other ways of gathering evidence. The difficulty at the heart of this case, gathering all the elements needed to open judicial investigations. The purported perpetrators of these violations are still in positions of power in Syria. In 2014, France, along with other Western countries, sought to have the regime condemned at the International Criminal Court. The regime uses every possible weapon, and sometimes the very worst. We had condemned the use of chemical weapons. An agreement had been reached. And if traces again are observed, we will use all legal means to once again have the regime condemned and implement sanctions. The United States had already drawn a red line. A red line for us is we start seeing a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. Thank you, everybody. But that red line did not hold. Despite France's insistence, the U.S. administration stopped short at an intervention, instead requesting that the U.N. set up a body to control the use of chemical weapons. All attempts to condemn Bashar al-Assad's regime came up against a double veto. Those against? Russia exercised its veto six times at the Security Council and blocked any decision related to the use of chemical weapons in Syria. Imagine that after days of tireless efforts, everything comes to a halt because of a veto in the Security Council, and that blocks any decision. This has a direct impact on civilians. Any delay in the judicial process is to the detriment of those victims. This diplomatic stalemate has had a direct impact on Awais Aldebouche's work. He investigates for NGOs and helps the French judicial authorities identify and prosecute war criminals. The regime has deliberately concealed evidence of crimes, starting with the destruction of mass graves, right up to pressuring doctors who were present in eastern Ghouta and falsifying their testimonies. It has also transported certain bodies to secret locations far from Damascus. The regime is careful to hide evidence and block the work of the organization for the prohibition of chemical weapons and prevent it from gaining access to sites in Syria, with the exception of a few inspectors who have been able to access areas authorized by the government. 
The use of chemical weapons was not limited to the 2013 attack in Ghouta. The Syrian Network for Human Rights has documented 217 chemical attacks carried out by the regime and another five orchestrated by the Islamic State. Syrian civilians were forced to collect evidence themselves from the rubble. Their efforts are essential if the French justice system is to move forward with the prosecutions. There are recordings, videos. We may even have documentation. All these elements have been collected and step by step we're moving forward with the case. In November 2023, the examining magistrates issued four arrest warrants against Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, his brother Maher al-Assad, Hassan Abbas, director of the Syrian Scientific Studies and Research Center, and General Bassam al-Hassan, liaison officer between the presidential palace and the SSRC. This is where the Syrian government develops chemical weapons, a center which has been under Western economic sanctions since 2012. These sanctions were enacted at the international level and have gradually prohibited, first of all, a certain number of individuals from traveling in Europe, in the United States. And then they've also prohibited any business activity with the Syrian regime and entities under the control of the Syrian regime. As part of her collaboration with the International Federation for Human Rights, Lawyer Clemence Bechtart is trying to establish the complicity of certain companies that collaborate with the Syrian government. This is another chapter in the story of these prosecutions. Despite the sanctions, the Syrian regime had to set up a whole system to get around these sanctions, mainly imposed by Western countries, and continue to finance itself and these crimes. Because to get around sanctions, the Syrian regime has to go through intermediaries. According to the U.S. Treasury Department, Yona Star is at the heart of this network. The company suspected of helping the Syrian army obtain materials to manufacture weapons, including chemical weapons. Yunistar is the object of Western sanctions. Salah Habib, a Franco-Syrian businessman, is at the head of the company. In 2021, the French justice system indicted him for complicity in crimes against humanity and war crimes, prohibiting him from leaving France. These are extremely complex investigations, which take time and also require a great deal of international cooperation, as do all investigations concerning Syria. But even more so because these financial transactions involve multiple countries. And we have to rely on cooperation whenever possible, which takes time. And so it's really too early to say when this investigation could be completed, when a trial could perhaps be organized in France. We contacted Salah Habib's French lawyer, who formally denied the accusations. Good morning, Mr. Bouquier. We're going to cover Salah Habib's case in our report. The only comment I can make is that my client categorically denies being an accomplice to any crime against humanity. Lubna al Kanawati is getting ready for her trip. She's about to go to The Hague to take part in a conference organized by a dozen Syrian NGOs. It's the first forum to focus specifically on chemical weapons. Let me show you the paintings I bought about depression and sadness and emotions in general. Look, each one has a name. I haven't hung them yet, because my son Kais told me they're very creepy. Aren't they beautiful? That sounds like my own contradictory feelings. Hello, you. Come and check my suitcase. Do you want to get in my suitcase and come with me? 
شو ممكن واحد ياخذ معه كمان؟ وهي الفترة ضاغطة كثير This is a very tense time after the arrest warrant. The testimony, the interviews, all the talk about the crimes. It's exhausting. You have to endure so much suffering just in the hope of obtaining recognition of the crimes committed. This conference is the fruit of two years of hard work and intensive lobbying. The stakes are extremely high, with the aim of establishing a special tribunal to prosecute all those responsible for chemical attacks worldwide. It would complement existing international bodies, including the International Criminal Court. A friend called to congratulate us on issuing arrest warrants. She told me she envied the Syrians because at least there's an arrest warrant, whereas the Kurds in Halabja, despite the fall of Saddam Hussein's regime, have never seen him convicted for the chemical attack. In my opinion, if Saddam had been convicted, Bashar would not have dared to commit these crimes. Likewise, if al-Assad is brought to justice, it could deter other dictators from committing such acts. Ibrahim Olabi is one of the lawyers advocating for the establishment of this new tribunal. He points out that Syrian refugees are central to the progress of judicial investigations. It is not our fault that the majority of us ended up in Europe because of breaches such as the use of chemical weapons and other things that led us to have access to these courts. When people say French judges issued their arrest warrants, go read the press releases how the French judges started that amazing work. The next step in establishing this new tribunal, formulating and signing a multilateral treaty, it would be a historic step. As for the trial of Bashar al-Assad, it's still a long way off, despite the arrest warrant issued by French judges. The Syrian president's still in office and benefits from judicial immunity, recognized by courts worldwide. The Paris Court of Appeal must rule on the validity of this arrest warrant. Arrest warrants have been requested, and these will be issued and will eventually lead to a trial. Trials are held in France, even in the absence of the accused. That's a step forward we hope to see. Following this, there will be a court decision. It will have a strong symbolic impact, but it could also have a more tangible effect. We meet up with Awais al Dubouche, the Syrian lawyer working on the investigations into his home country. At that moment, he was taking part in an online conference aimed at a Syrian audience. He and the other speakers are explaining the legal proceedings which were initiated in France. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Eva. We'll try to answer all your questions. We can see that the walls of NGOs and witnesses are essential in legal cases. But there are so many challenges, especially in France. Could you tell us more about them? One of the major challenges facing Syrians is the fear that witnesses feel when someone testifies before national, that is, European, judicial authorities. They fear that their name will appear in the file, and despite witness protection measures, the file can be consulted by a lawyer for the defence. This means that some witnesses hesitate, the biggest fear being that if the family is in Syria, they may simply be killed if their name is mentioned in any way. Without the testimonies of Syrian refugees, it's almost impossible for NGOs to open investigations in France. So protecting these witnesses is a crucial issue. This woman was one of the citizens who helped the victims of the attack on the town of Sakba on August 21st, 2013. We'll call her Salwa, because even though she's had refugee status in France for nearly three years, she's still afraid to testify openly in court. <laughs> But 
انا ما عم تتامل لي الحمايه الكافيه لا الي ولا لعائلتي ولا ولعائلتي اهم شيء لعائلتي اللي موجوده عند النظام خوف مسيطر علي ان بالظهور الكامل لتقديم شهادتي قد ايه مرقت علي مجازا شاركت باسعافه بالغوطه وضربات بس مثل هذا اليوم انا لم اشهد لكن مجزره 2013 لن تمحى من ذاكرتي During the attack, the medical infrastructure in the area was also bombed. Salwa went to help the wounded with her father, a doctor. المي معباية الأرض، أجهزة الاستنشاق في اثنين أو ثلاثة بالأراضي، إبر الأتربين بالأرض، حالة فوضى عارمة، أساساً مكان مو طبي، مكان هي مدرسة. لكن من هول المصيبة ومن كثرة الأعداد والإصابات ما عاد الناس الطبية الحق. Sarin gas causes its victims to experience acute respiratory distress. للحظة على باب المدرسة انهرت المنظر طق شعر له الأبد أطفال تحتضر عم تختلج نساء عم تختلج دام حسب الله ونعم الوكيل أب يحضن أبناء كان عنا حلين لإعطاء العلاج هو أتروبين وريدي أو أتروبين استنشاق If treated quickly with atropine, the wounded can survive. طلعت بوالدي والدي كان عم عم يأسعف حدا قال لي شو بكي مالك أدرانا لسه ورجعي وما بتستهل تكوني ممرضة فأنا هون رجعت صار معي قوي أول حدا للأسف كان في خالة كبيرة بالعمر شوي يعني بعيدة عن الباب شوي كانت عم تحتضر ركضت تجيب أتروبين بس مساعدة قدر قدر يعني أعطيها شيء وريدي للأسف توفت بين إيدي Between February and April 2018 This devastating offensive enabled the Syrian regime to regain control over the eastern Ghouta region. تركنا سبا طبعا انا وزوجي وبنتي كونه معي طفله نحاول ننجو فيها لاخر لحظه. اخر شهرين بالتصعيد الاخير بال 2018 انضرب كلور بحموريا كنا نحن وقتها بالاقبيه. فنحن استنشقنا غاز كلور UN reports confirm that the Syrian government has used chlorine on several occasions This is how the regime has regained control of this strategic region which links Damascus to other provinces Bashar al-Assad has called it a huge victory achieved with Russian support Saying he's proud to have won the fight against the terrorists. نحن بالتهجير الأخير بـ 2018 خرجنا من الغوطة لما استرجع نظام الغوطة وقدم خيار التهجير يا البقاء تحت حكمه وأكيد كن رح نعتقل أو يتنكل فينا أو ما بنعرف شو رح يصير فينا Under a Russian-sponsored agreement, more than 150,000 people were evacuated in convoys to the Idlib region in northern Syria. I'm 
مشاهد يوم التحجير لا تشبه مشاهد يوم المجزرة لكن بيشتركوا بكثير نقاط فهي كارثة هائلة يصعب على العقل البشري أنه يستحملها Since Huta has been back under government control, those still living there have reported serious violations. They've also warned of attempts to cover up the chemical attacks. The UN has repeatedly requested information from the regime on its chemical arsenal to no avail. نحن آلاف الشهود على المجزرة بيوم من الأيام رح يوصل صوتنا ورح يتحاكم طريق العدالة طويل لكن بالنهاية أنا دائما عندي الأمل أنه كل شيء تمنيته رح يتحقق لما تتحقق العدالة